Space Station 14 has numerous types of grenades. These grenades range from non-lethal grenades to lethal grenades to somewhere in between. So I will just go through them and not a super uniform list, but the reason why I'm doing this is that there's new grenades added. So there is now more options and some of them may not be all that clear. So the most basic of grenades is the flashbang. Security officers will spawn with two of them. Uh, I hardly need to explain this. You pull out the grenade and there's nothing to do with it other than just examine it. The timer is always three and a half seconds. So to be able to activate a grenade, you just put it in your hand and press E, and then you could either press Q to drop it or throw it with Control Q. And yeah, once the flashbang goes off, you get a disoriented effect. You can't really move and it makes your vision blurry. And it lasted a little bit, so uh, it is really good for suspects or non-suspects depending on what side you're on uh, if they don't have welding protection or eye protection uh, sunglasses and stuff will make you pretty uh, completely immune to it so that's something to keep in mind next uh, the cluster bang it's basically a flash grenade if you have zero accuracy this is like flashing through volume I will just activate it and put my glasses on you don't need to see the Sun it shoots the flashbangs in multiple directions, far and wide, and you can flash almost an entire room. Cluster bang is located in the sec tech. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there is no way to get more of them other than restocking the sec tech. Next is the stinger grenade. This is a new grenade. It was added very recently. It is incredibly powerful. It might be one of the strongest items in the game. So if I just spawn a bunch of Eurus in a circle, press Z and detonate it in the center. It is, like, probably, like, it's, uh, it's probably just flat out overpowered. <laughs> I'll just say it. Um, it's just so good at stunning. It only has the flashbang on you. Like, if you detonate in your hand, <laughs> like, it almost crit me with armor. And you can just stun anyone around you. So, like, you could basically just suicide into nukies to guarantee stun all of them at once. There are modular grenades, which can be made in your uh, crafting menu. Uh, basically, you need a trigger and a payload, which science will have to make, or uh, security can make the triggers, but they can't... Or security can make, like, explosive and flash payloads if they have the tech for it. A flash payload is basically the same as just a flashbang. And the chemical payload, which is going to be really made by science, it lets you put any reagent in a, from a beaker into... The payload, there's two beaker slots, so you can mix different chems together to make explosive explosions or like poison clouds, whatever you can think of. Uh, I'm not really going to show it all because that could be hour-long video. And there's also different triggers that can be made through science with the right tech. Um, the voice trigger, you basically just tell it a word and then it will trigger the grenade. There's a timer trigger, which makes it just, it's a timer. And the signal trigger, which makes it so you can hook it up to like a button or a remote signaler. So the... Sky is the limit to your creativity with modular grenades. They could be lethal, non-lethal, somewhere in between. Healing or annoying, fix walls, there's a ton you can do. Next up is the explosive payload. Security can make these at their security tech fab once it is researched through science. Also, you have to put it in a modular grenade, so again, you need some more science help here. And with modular grenades, you can set the delay to whatever you want. Uh, you can also have it on a timer, you can have it on a word trigger. Uh, there's plenty of things you could do. You can have a signal trigger as well. So there's multiple uses of it, but just for the sake of showing the damage of it, I'm just using like a normal grenade and planting it. Modular grenades are much louder and much more apparent to everyone nearby. But funnily enough, the um, explosive grenade actually does a pretty crazy amount of damage for being security related. Uh, I mean, it does 140 damage to an unarmored target and... It has a pretty massive AoE. I blew up the Christmas tree. I even hurt myself, and I was standing far away. Uh, so yeah, you can cause a pretty bit of a fair bit of damage with a security or with a, a grenade from security. So you have to be pretty cautious of who you're using it against. Uh, pretty much the only way I can imagine a security officer justifying making a frag grenade would be against war ops, against nukies if they still may have the time to do so, and maybe. Against zombies, um, it doesn't really space anything. I just wouldn't use it in your windows, obviously. Like, I guess as a last resort, I could see it being used there. I mean, I guess, realistically, there's always a last 
like I can see a security officer bombing themselves too, honestly, if they're like getting attacked by revs or something. So yeah, I, I guess it has to be used within reason. Next up is the improvised explosive device. Uh, it is pretty easy to make. You can make it with no special parts at all. It's crafted in the craft menu. So if you have access to these, you can easily make it. There is no way to change the timer on it, and the timer is random between uh, like one second in, or instant in 60 seconds, I believe. So I'll just activate it and plant it, and once it detonates, I will show you, well, the damage it does. So as you can see, the explosion radius isn't too high, but anyways, the damage is in the 40s at least. Next, we have the EMP grenade, uh, a grenade designed to disrupt electronic systems, useful for disrupting communication, securities, energy weapons, APCs when you're in a tight spot. Costs two telecrystals, it's under the explosive category. Uh, there's no way to change the timers on it, it is like a flashbang, it is at three and a half seconds. You pick it up, press Z, and you'll see your battery based objects completely drain. So as you can see, the audio, the uh, battery for the stun baton went to 0%, and it starts messing with the electronics in a nearby area, and it breaks the lights. Next we have the white hole grenade, a grenade that repulses everything around for about 10 seconds. Very useful in small rooms and for chasing someone, it costs 3 telecrystals. You can't adjust the timer on this one. You pick it up, press Z, timer set to 3 seconds, and if I just put it right here, it pushes everything away. Has awesome audio and a really cool visual effect. Uh, it's not really going to be lethal unless you're in, like, very specific areas, like maybe with, like, electric grills or, like, on a planet or something. But either way, it's a pretty cheap and it has many useful applications, but it's best comboed with other things. Next is the explosive grenade. It is for telecrystal simplistic grenade with a three and a half second long fuse and is geared towards injuring personnel. So, just press Z, leave it somewhere. Has two distinct beeps. Pretty large explosion range, and the damage is also pretty high about... The damage is also pretty high, 45 in each category, so it is pretty deadly for its cost. It's pretty much the same as the security frag grenade. Next is the shrapnel grenade. It is new. Launches a spray of shrap sharp fragments, dealing great damage against unarmored targets. It is new to the game, so... I will just show it like this. We put a bunch of Eurist in a circle. It looks like a modular grenade, but it has a red light, light in the middle instead of green. If you press Z, you'll, dead, you'll beep it just like the explosive grenade. It'll go off. And yeah, this one's also very, very deadly. Uh, 180 damage. They're all going to bleed to death. 135. 135. And 180. And me, myself, even standing as far away as I was, I still took a solid 30 while wearing body armor. So it is a definite room clearer. It looks awesome. Uh, almost even broke the windows over here. So pretty strong purchase for, for telecrystals. It's arguably better than the explosive grenade, I think. But it is a bit more um, harder to control, I guess. But it also works better in spaced rooms because grenades lose some potency in spaced rooms. But that's just my opinion on that anyways. Next is the incendiary grenade. It releases a spray of incendiary fragments igniting anyone near the detonation area. So, just like the shrapnel grenade, you got three and a half seconds. Beeps twice. Put it in the middle. And it shoots out fire grenades, or fire bullets that don't do immediate damage, but they do give you a ton of burning stacks. Even for more outstanding, if I stop dropping, if I stop drop and roll now, I still might not even live. Uh... Now, it looks like if you react pretty quickly, you will live, but being set on fire like that will basically take you out of a fight and do damage. So it's almost like an intermittent between the rubber bullet version and the normal bullet version. I mean, being forced to roll or spray yourself with water is kind of like taking you out of the fight right away, but it doesn't do the immediate damage of the piercing ones. And if they don't put themselves out, they will keep burning and will die, so there's also that potential. Also, it did overheat me as well, so that's another minor problem that might be, well, a larger problem. It's a very interesting grenade, and this one might be the best if you're not worried about getting hit, because, like, I was decently far away and tapped myself, and it almost killed me because I didn't stop and drop right away. So this one may also be at the greatest risk to yourself. There is the Grenade Penguin, small, highly aggressive penguin with a grenade strapped around its neck, harvested by the Syndicate from icy shithole planets. If you pick it up, it will start biting me because I'm not a Syndicate agent, I kind of messed this one up. But you can press Q to drop it, 
and it'll just keep biting the nearest person. But until it dies, it actually won't explode. But you can press Z to activate it early and then just toss it at someone. And it seems to, it just always bites the nearest non-syndicate member. But due to its the way mobs kite, it has a very high chance of just detonating in the middle of nowhere because of its kiting. But if somebody's mailing it to death, um, that might cause some more damage. Like here, I'll just... See, so yeah, now that I have it grabbed, if I detonate it... It actually can space rooms, no problem. It can basically kill you instantly as well. So this one's actually interesting for the fact that it can do damage to uh, space the floor. The damage is pretty high in the penguin as well, but due to the fact that it's a living mob, people can pick it up pretty easily. They can one-click shove it over. It's uh, pretty easy, easily counterable as long as you're not panicking. Next up is the mini bomb, low yield, high impact precision, sabotage explosive with 5 second long fuse, perfect for quickly destroying a machine, dead body, or whatever else needs to go. It is very iconic, it has a very distinct sound, if you pick it up, press E, it'll activate it. It will flash red and green, and a mini bomb on an unarmored target will usually give them, I don't actually know why they survived. They just took 20, they did, they, they, the damage was 20 off. It will typically give a fully healthy person. But um, sometimes if they have any form of explosive resistance or you're just off by a slight amount, uh, you will not give them, but they will take a ton of damage and will die anyways. Next up is the Super Matter Grenade. Grenade that simulates the, the elimination of a Super Matter engine, generates powerful gravity well explosion comparable to a mini bomb. You pick it up, press C, put it somewhere. It actually pulls things in randomly, but it also shoots you out when you reach the center of it. So there's some randomness to this as well. It's also kind of hard to run away from, but not impossible. But if you get hit by like a bar of soap or something while this is happening, you might lose complete control. And again, due to the randomness, you could go from either almost giving someone, potentially giving someone, to doing zero damage to your target. It does space the floor though, so you might do damage uh, as a side effect due to that. But Anyways, I, it's a really deadly grenade. It's really popular on uh, shuttle bombing for, I guess, I mean, a good reason. It causes a lot of mayhem. And due to that, it's pretty good for its cost. There is the cluster grenade. Three explosive grenades bundled together. The, the grenades get launched out. So it's like the cluster bang. And it was set to a three and a half second timer. I'll press C just right here in the middle of the room. Step away from it. It does shoot three grenades in separate directions. It... Basically, is like a carpet bomb. Um, it it's unlikely you're going to end up hitting anyone directly that you intend to directly hit. But like, if you just want to toss it into a crowd, toss it behind you. Uh, this does a lot of AOE damage. Uh, I think this is going to be really popular in Nukies because that's a hell of an entrance. There's a slip apocalypse cluster soap for three telecrystals under the mist tab. Scatters around small pieces of Syndicate brand soap after being thrown. These pieces of soap evaporate after 60 seconds, so if you pick it up and throw it, it evaporates into a ton of tiny little uh, soaplets. Uh, I'm too hurt to slip on them. But yes, if you even touch them, you do slip, and it does the full Syndicate st uh, stun slip. So if you combine this with no slips as like a, your own option, you can really make a field that you be, people have to walk over or have no slips to navigate over. And this stun is a lifetime, so if you're trying to like melee fight someone in the, your slip apocalypse field, uh, you will have a very strong advantage forcing your opponent to either walk or, well, slip. There is the Cluster Banana Peel, which is a clown exclusive for six Talus Crystals. It looks like a banana. It splits into six explosive banana peels after throwing, guaranteed fun. The banana peels do disappear after 20 seconds, though, if no one steps on them, so... Chaining them together like that can actually do quite a lot of damage. Again, it slips you, but banana slips aren't too long. The explosive uh, cluster grenade is definitely a better value. I guess the nice thing is, though, is that the peels do explode afterwards, so if people are, like, completely unaware of what they are, they might end up falling for that. The exploding pen is a 5 telecrystal purchase, a class 4 explosive... Class 4 explosive device contained with the standard pen comes with a 4 second fuse. Purchase it, in your hand you'll get a red exploding pen box. You press C to unwrap it. Then it just looks like a normal pen. You can put it in your pen slot or just put it wherever you want. But if you pick it up and press C, it'll start a timer. There is no audio for it. And after 4 seconds it will explode into a cross shape. The explosion radius is small, but the damage is enough to crit an unarmored target if they're dead center. 
And last but not least, of what I would consider the grenades is the Holy Hand Grenade. It is a 20 telecrystal purchase available only to chaplains. I'm not entirely sure if it's in surpluses still. It was at one point. I don't know if it still is. Um, anyways, though, 20 telecrystals. as a three-second timer. Pick it up, press Z, you'll have an iconic sound, and do a massive amount of damage. It will not gib, but it spaces a massive area. It will kill pretty much anyone in it. It is the most deadly grenade by far, but it costs all your telecrystals. But that's all of what, again, I would consider grenades. Thank you for watching.